Hi everyone, it's Jen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today I have a little tutorial on how to make these little mini pie pin cushions. Aren't they adorable? Um, I was totally inspired by an Instagram account that I follow. Um, I believe it's Kate M Designs. I will link her down below, but she was selling uh, ones that look very similar to this in her Etsy shop. Actually, she had sold out by the time I had looked. So I wanted to um, recreate them and they don't look exactly the same. Um, I use different pans and different fabrics, of course, and I think I used a different um, technique for the crust. But um, anyway, I, I don't want to sell these because they are someone else's, you know, design and I was just inspired by them. So, I, you know, I don't want to sell them. I don't think it would be right, but I did make uh, a few of them and I wanted to show you my technique for making um, these little pies. I wish I had come up with the idea. I think they are so cute. So these are two and a half inch mini tartlet pans and I picked these up at Home Goods, and they were $8.99 there. I did look them up online. They do have them on Amazon. I think it's for $11.99. And they're uh, 20 count, two and a half inch mini tartlet pans. And these are good because um, they have pretty, um, I mean, it's not straight sides. They do flare in a little bit, but not too much. So there's enough room to put in, um, you know, your, your little pie. And they're really well made too. I think they're aluminum. Let me see. Um, aluminum, yes, but they're nice and sturdy. They're not like really bendy aluminum. If you wanted to, you could use disposable little pie pans. Um, I think they have them at like Walmart and places like that, like in the um, uh, like baking pan aisle, the disposable one by foil and things like that. But I wanted to get ones that were a little bit more sturdy. That's why I picked these up at Home Goods, and these work great. So the measurements that I'm going to give you today are for two and a half inch pie pans. If you get like three inch ones, I think that's more the standard of the dis disposable ones. You have to make your things a little bit bigger. So just keep that in mind. But I will link these down below. All right, and let's go over some other little things you're going to need. Um, for the fabric for the crust here, it looks like linen, but it's called Osnaberg. And Osnaberg is a uh, like a textured muslin fabric. It's 100% cotton. And it's um, you can find it at Joann's, which is where I get it. And it's very reasonable price. It's $7.99 a yard. And you can use coupons on their fabrics as well. So keep that in mind. Um, I've had a couple of yards for a long time now. And I use that in a lot of projects that I want a little bit of texture. And this is what it looks like. See, it looks like linen, um, but obviously much cheaper. And it doesn't wrinkle like linen does, and it's very uh, easy to work with. So get some of that if you don't have any. You're gonna need some fabric for the pie itself. And I use this cute little print that has little hearts in the gingham. And this print comes from a fabric line, line from Lysienne, and it's Woodland Rose by Jira Brandvig. And this is an older collection, um, but and this is, this is like a, a layer cake, which is 10 inch squares. And the back part of this layer cake has all the different colors of the um, heart ginghams. So there's green and there's tan and the red and the yellow that I used. So anyway, I just wanna show you what I use. Use any kind of fabric you want, um, you know, wherever you get fabric, whatever you like. I recommend a smaller scale print since it is a tiny little pie. So I used yellow and red on there. And then let's see, you're going to need some pinking shears. Um, it's not crucial, but um, I like to trim the, the crust part with the pinking shears. So first of all, it leaves a nice decorative edge and also keeps it from fraying. So pinking shears and you're going, going to need a needle and thread. I recommend that you use a thicker thread like pearl cotton. This is 12 weight pearl cotton. You can get this at uh, Joann's or any other like sewing kind of supply store. Um, and this is just white. And then you'll need a needle that has a big enough eye to fit that, um, that thread in. So like a regular needle might not have a, um, an eye that's big enough for this thread. Uh, and I use this thread because we're going to be 
doing uh, some running stitches and then pulling and tightening it. I just made a knot there. So sometimes with regular thread, it snaps for me. You could try it with regular thread if you want, but I like to use thicker thread like this. So this is actually an embroidery needle. So you're gonna need that. You also need some stuffing to stuff the, uh, the center of your pin cushion. And the one that I used is from Walmart. Hang on, let me get it. Um, this is the Polyfill Ultra Plush. I really like this one. It's really nice and soft. It comes in this big bag. You know, it's like, I don't know, five or six dollars, something like that. And it'll last you a long time. And if you don't want to go and buy a whole bag of Polyfill, you can use like some pillow stuffing or something, whatever you want. It's no big deal. I mean, that's a small little um, pie, so it doesn't need much. Okay, so I think that's about all you need. Um, you'll need an adhesive too. You want something strong that's made for fabric, like Fabri-Tac. So I use that and I recommend Fabri-Tac. You're also going to need regular fabric scissors and some embellishments, but we'll get to that uh, towards the end. Okay, so let me take you through the steps on how to make one of these little pin cushions. So you take your little pie pan and you're going to need to cut a circle of fabric for the crust out of the Osnaberg. So for this measurement pie, you will cut out a um, um, four inch circle. So this is a four inch circle and I cut it out with pinking shears as you can see. Uh, for four inches, I used, I happen to have these infinity dies and there's a four inch one. So I just put that on top of my fabric, traced it with a pencil, and then just cut it out with my pinking shears. You don't have to use a die for four inches. You know, you can use like a bowl or something, just something, you know, reasonably close to four inches. So do that with the Osnaberg. And then with your printed fabric, you're gonna cut out a piece that is five inches. And this one has little pieces of fabric all over it. But um, for five inches, I have a, I actually have a circle that I had pre-cut out for something else. So I just put that on top of the fabric, uh, traced around it with a pencil, and then cut it out. And I actually did that on the reverse side of the fabric so I wouldn't have pencil lines on the top. All right, so here's where the sew, where you start sewing. And if you're not a sewer, you don't really need to do much at all. This is very basic sewing. So take a, a pretty big length of um, thread. I always have a lot left over, but I'd rather have a lot than not enough. So this is about probably about two feet of, of thread of pearl cotton. And then make a knot at one end, but leave several inches because you're, you're gonna end up tying this end to the other end. And you wanna make sure you have enough space to tie a knot. Okay, so take your printed fabric. I don't know where I got all this lint from. Okay, and then turn it to the wrong side of your fabric. See, that's the right side, this is the wrong side. And what you're gonna do is take your needle and thread and make a running stitch all the way around the outside. And a running stitch is, uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's a very simple stitch, and that just means weaving in and out of the fabric. Nothing complicated, it's just to gather up the fabric. So start wherever, um, start close to the end, not too close, and then just go down into the fabric and then come back out, in, out, in, out, and keep going until you've got a bunch of stitches on your needle. This goes really quickly. Try and keep it you know, close to the same distance from your needle to the end of the fabric just like that, and then stop with your needle, um, you know, on this side of the fabric. Then take it and pull it all the way through. And when you do that, you'll have, it'll stop at the knot that you made, so you'll have this tail of thread, and you can see how it's going to gather. So you're just gonna do that all the way around. In, out, and don't worry if it takes you a while, if you're not, you know, not a sewer. Just, just do it, you know, nice and evenly. You'll get there. It doesn't take long. And this is like one of the easiest stitches you could do. OK. 
Okay, we're gonna keep going. All right, and then when you get close to the end, just make sure you end up on the same side of the fabric. So you don't wanna end up there. You wanna end up right next to the other knot. Okay, and then pull it all the way through. Like that. And then you're just going to, you could take your needle off at this point. You don't need it anymore. And yeah, I have a lot of thread left over. I didn't need to cut that much, but it's just easier for me to have too much and too little. Okay, then make sure your thread is on the inside. So you have like, it looks like a little hat like that. Okay, so you just turned it right side out. All right, so then go ahead and take, um, take the end of thread that you just finished and pull it gently so it gathers all the way around. And then you wanna kind of smooth out the gather so they're nice and even from the end to the beginning. And then it looks like a little bonnet like that. Okay, and then you're gonna take your stuffing. And I'm just gonna take a big handful and put it on my table. I'm not gonna need all that, but just so I don't have to keep reaching. So take a bunch of this stuffing and stuff it in. Oops, move over. And then keep stuffing it. Just bring it up so you can see it a little bit better. And you wanna stuff it so it's nice and full, not overly full, but not under full either. So once you're doing that, you can tighten it as you go because it's gonna loosen up just to see how it's looking. And I like to just adjust it so it looks nice and even, and then turn it over. And you can see there's a lot of gathers here, so it's gonna need a little bit more stuffing. I don't want too many folds in there. So I can't really tell you how much stuffing to use. You just kinda have to do it till it looks right. All right, and then pull it closed again. And then I like to adjust the gathers so it's even around. And then I kind of do a dry fit into the pie pan to see how it's gonna look. That looks good. That's, that's full, but it's not too full. Okay. So again, I just wanna kind of even out the gathers. And you could do this more once it's all tied, but keep them both taut like this so um, it doesn't loosen up what you just tried to even out. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and tie your two ends together and I'm gonna cut off a lot of that excess string because it'll just get in the way now. Okay, so I'm going to tie these two ends together and you wanna hold it closed with your hand while you're tying it. If you have somebody around who can hold it for you, that's great, but I usually have to do it by myself. Okay, so the first knot, you could just pull it like that. Makes a lot of noise, that little tin. <laughs> okay, so that was the first knot. Then I'm gonna hold that and do the second knot. Make sure you do at least two knots. Okay, we'll do three just for fun. All right, I'm gonna cut off the excess. And then I'm going to adjust these gathers a little bit more. See, cause that, those are close together and 
there's more space over there. So I'm just gonna slide it a little bit. It doesn't really matter, but once you have this in your pie pan, you want it to look as round as possible and doing the adjusting will help that. All right, so there's our little pie, little pie pin cushion. All right, so now we're gonna start um, assembling the pie. Just gonna move over my little cutting board here so I don't mess up my surface. And we have our circle of Osnaberg. And just take your fabric tack This one is nearing the bottom, so I usually have to shake it a lot. But um, go ahead and just put it in the bottom of your pie tin. So don't be shy. Lay a bunch down. Just in the bottom, maybe up the sides a teeny little bit like that. You can use hot glue if you want. Fabri-Tac works great. All right, and then take your circle of Osnaberg, lay it on top of your pie tin, and then just push it down so it's nice and even, just like that. And just push down the bottom. It doesn't matter what the sides look like too much at this point because you still have to put the little pie in and then you'll adjust the sides once you do that but we just want the bottom glued down and check to make sure it's pretty even along the sides. And it should come up a little bit over the pie edge. Okay, so there. And then take your little pie that we made, this cute little cushion, and just gonna do a little dry fit again. That's gonna look like that. So I take my fabric tack again and just glue it all over the bottom of the little pie, the pie filling, I guess. And this would be fun. You can make all different kinds of pie, you know, depending on the color and the fabric you use. And then the embellishments you put on top can show, you know, what kind of pie you're using or making. Thick peach would be fun too. But I'm just doing lemon today um, just to show you like one that I had made. All right, so I've got that glued. Okay, so it's glue all over there. And then you're gonna lie it into your pie crust. Just be careful it doesn't go too much on the sides. You know, just try and get it in holding the crust apart with your fingers so it looks like that. And then just kind of press it down. And then if you need to, pull up, hold it down, and then pull up the edges of the pie crust so it's nice and even all the way around. See, like here's a little fold. So you're just gonna go ahead and take that and pull it out. And that's a good thing about using Fabri-Tac right now instead of hot glue, because if you used hot glue, then it might be set already and you wouldn't be able to pull it. So I like using the Fabri-Tac. It's just a little bit more forgiving for a project like this. And it holds it really well. So there we go. I like when the crust is up a little bit like that. The first one I made, um, the crust was more level with the pie, which is cute too, but I kind of like it a little bit higher, kind of like a real pie. Like this one, I think is a perfect length. This one's a little bit higher than that. I guess it's about the same, but I'm just gonna go ahead and keep evening out the crust. And this way, once you do that, it looks more like pie, like a fluted pie crust. just kind of follows the line of the little tart pan, which I like. So just take your time. You want it to look good. Since it's such a, a tiny little project, you want it to be, every little detail to be cute and perfect. Okay, so I think that looks good. So that's pretty much done. Now you can add embellishments too. Like for this one, I added um, a little lemon cabochon that I had gotten from Allie a long time ago. And then I made a couple leaves from the Osnaberg because like when I make pie, I put some little 
um, like crust leaves on top of the uh, on top of the crust just to you know add some decoration before I bake it. And I also made little tags, so um, I thought maybe we can make those together. So let me get out the uh, tag supplies. All right, so I zoomed in a little bit to see this better. Uh, for the little tags that I use for these, as you can see, they're teeny tiny. I used this die set that I had gotten from Allie. I think it might have been like the first die set I ever bought from there. If I can find it, I will I'll link it down below, but just know it's a teeny little tag. It's about, um, geez, three quarters of an inch long, so it's small. But use whatever one you have in your stash or just, you know, cut one out of paper yourself. This is what they look like when they're all cut out. I just die cut a few of them and I use some ivory cardstock. And then for the sentiments, I'm using this set from Hero Greetings. Um, I think I might have gotten this at Joann's. I'm not quite sure, but it's called Mini Messages. And these are teeny tiny little sentiments. So they work perfectly for that size tag. Actually, some of them are too big, but some of them we can use. So I got out a stamp block. Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and also tea dye Distress Oxide. So I'm sure you guys know how to stamp, but if not, I thought we could go ahead and just have a quick little lesson for a little sentiment. For bigger stamps, I like, like to use a stamp positioner, but for a tiny sentiment like this, um, I think it's fine to just go ahead and use your acrylic block. So you wanna pick one that is not too big for your tag. So let's say I've used hugs, I've used cutie, we could try hello, um, what else? Wow, XOXO, let's just do hello. Okay, so I just took it off and put it on top of my stamp block, doesn't really matter where. And then take your black ink and then just ink that up. Just press it right down onto the stamp like that. This is so small. Okay, and then you take your tag and then the good thing about it being a clear block and clear stamp is you can see exactly where it's going to go on your tag. Let's zoom in again so you can see. Okay, hopefully you can see. Let's see where it says hello. So just press it down there, just rock it a little bit. And this is so tidy, it just comes off like that. So there we have, hello. Let's try that one more time. That's not the greatest impression, but it's fine. Okay, we'll get one more tag out. I like to do a few at a time anyway. And hello. All right, so that's done. And then we're going to just edge the outside with some Distress Oxide just to make it look a little aged like that one. Let me zoom out just a tad. Okay, so I'm gonna open this, my Distress Oxide. You can use whatever you have, ink. I just have tea dye Distress Oxide, so. And then a um, little brush like that and get some ink on it and then just dab the edges. I usually do it on a paper towel, but I'm just going to use this cutting mat that I have down here for now. I'll clean it up after. And then it doesn't need much, just, you know, a little bit on the edges. Pick that up and show you just a little bit. Might as well do the other one while we're here. This way I'll have one done for the next pie because these are so fun to make. So far, well, I've made those two. I have another one in the process of being made and then the one that we made together. And I want to make more with different fabrics. This is the other one that I had made, just part of it. And this is the one that we were making together. So, all right, so we have our little tags done. And then let's see if I have a lemon about. Yes, I do. Okay, so here's our lemon. I think I'm gonna skip the leaves on this one. 
but the lemon will go, we're gonna put that right in the center. And again, use your Fabri-Tac to glue that on, hot glue, whatever you want. Um, I really like Fabri-Tac for something like this because you are gluing it onto fabric and it's a good, strong craft glue. So just put a nice coat on there. And then I'm just gonna put it right in the middle. Okay, and then the good thing about this tag die is it has a hole in it. I mean, most tag dies do, I guess, but there's a hole right there for, and it's a great size for a pin to go through like that. So you could use any kind of pin you have. I have these like little straight pins. You don't want the, the length of the pin to be too long because then it you know will stick up from the, from the pie itself, but this is a good length. And this is, oops, just dropped one. I have to remember to pick that up. But uh, let's get a yellow one out. So you could just stick your pin right through your tag like that, and then just stick it into your pie, like so. Or you can make your own pins too. Um, I mean, not make your own pins, but make the embellishments on them. So here's one that I made that looks like kind of like a little strawberry. So what I did was I took one of those yellow pins and then I put a little green flower sequin on it. And that was from, I don't know where I got these from, but they're like little, little flower sequins. And then I put a tiny little pink, pa pink faceted bead under that and then a tiny little clear seed bead. And before I put the clear seed bead on, I put a, a couple of dots of some clear um, glaze from Lawn Fawn. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Do I have it out? Yes. It's like uh, glossy accents, but this is Lawn Fawn clear glaze. Oh, I'm trying to show you and I was not in frame. It's like glossy accents, but it's Lawn Fawn Clear Glaze. And this dries really quickly and nice and clear and strong. So that holds everything together. And I put it in a, in a clothespin because I just kind of like set it on a shelf to dry upside down. So gravity would keep everything down like that. So you could like, you know, just embellish your own pin and put them on your pin cushion too, so that would be cute, right? Just like a, a cute little homemade center, and you can put it in straighter than that. And coordinate the fruit to whatever, you know, pie you're making. And then well, let's put our little tag on that too. And how fun would this be? You could put like a little pumpkin there maybe for pumpkin pie, or, you know, varieties you can make are endless. So those are my little examples. I hope you enjoyed this. I had so much fun making these. I'm going to be making more for sure. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down below and I'd be happy to um, answer them if possible and uh, hope you try these out. If you do, please tag me on Instagram or YouTube or wherever you show them. I would love to see how they come out. Um, all the links that I have will be down below. Um, and yeah, that's it for now. So thank you so much for joining me. Please stay tuned for more crafty videos and please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And please subscribe as well if you're not already. All right, everyone, I'll be back soon. Take care, bye.